Hello there, thanks for joining us. It's the Sweet Spot, the Racing Post's weekly golf show with Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer. You're very welcome. Here's what we've got on the show today. We're going to look back on a fascinating, dramatic and for Steve, very successful weekend. And while we've only got one tournament to preview this week, it is an absolute cracker. All the world's top players in action in Los Angeles. We'll see who Steve fancies. And because we've only got one tournament, We've got tons and tons of Twitter questions for Steve, so I will be bombarding him. First, though, Steve, well done. A winner. Excellent. You must have a warm glow, don't you? I have. I feel good, thanks. I thought I was going to feel really, really bad after Ryan Fox won the Raz Al Khaimah Classic, uh, but then the, the, the chef saved the day. The chef served up a delicious midnight feast and, and balanced it out nicely. Good, yeah. Scotty, in case you, that, that sentence means absolutely nothing to you, Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> Broke his PGA duck in really, really good style in the Phoenix Open. Got the better of Patrick Cantlay in a playoff that et into my Super Bowl watching, Steve. I have to say it was going on a little bit long, but he got it done. I was delighted for you and held it together well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like really like Scotty Schefter. He had a magnificent weekend burst. I mean, at the halfway stage, he was 150 to 1. Uh, he's actually but he, done at 300 on the exchanges. Oh, was he really? Yeah, <laughs> he, was, well, he, yeah. He, he served up nine birdies on Saturday, served up eight birdies on Sunday, and then birdied the third extra hole to finish it off. So a real weekend birdie barrage. And it's not often you win your first tournament and then you move into the world's top 10. But um, that's what Scheffler did. He's up to world number nine now. Shows how consistent he's been. Super consistent ball striker. Been knocking on the door of the PGA Tour winner's enclosure. And his short game, I think, is getting better. Um, you know, his, his swing has always been really consistent. Yeah, it's not a prettiest swing, is it? Lots of foot movement. You must have noticed the, the foot movement last week. But um, it's powerful and uh, it gets results. But I thought the short game was the most impressive thing last week. He, he was second in the putting stats last week. And I thought his best shot of the week was the, the second hole of that playoff. He was in all sorts of trouble mm. on the second extra hole. Really deft touch to, 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 to set up a tap in par and um, was that yeah. the one where he was sta- he had to stand in the bunker but his ball was on the verge is that the one well no that was his second shot and then his third shot he was he was to the left of the green and it, it, it yeah he, he made it look so easy but it, there was lots of humps and hollows and he got it to t- tap in par range yeah that was really really gutsy in the circumstances I mean I, I make Scheffler a, a big runner for the Masters now um, mm. you yeah, know he's played at Augusta twice before finished 19th and 18th. And his caddy will be a real asset, Augusta. I mean, we, we, I meant to talk about Ted Scott last week and I forgot, but Ted Scott, you'll have a lot of sympathy for him, Bruce, because he caddied for Bubba Watson for 15 years. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Bubba, as you said last week, he used to give Ted Scott a, a, a tough old time, but they won two Masters titles together. So um, they, they split up at the end of last year and then Scheffler recruited Ted Scott. So he goes to Augusta with a, you know, a, a fantastic asset in Ted Scott. And um, yeah, I think Scheffler can go close um in the masters okay what about patrick canley because i mean i think that's his fifth start this year and they've he's finished top 10 in all of them um so he's knocking on the door every single time not quite getting it done i don't think there's any isn't it? We, we don't need to start getting choker tags out or anything like that do we i mean it's just just someone had to lose i suppose no, if you've backed him each way for every event this year, which um, you know, we're not far off have, you're, yeah. you're, uh, you're doing all right. I mean, uh, obviously, I was delighted to see him in, in full short on, on, on Sunday. Um, I don't know. The putter, the putter um, was better last week, but um, I don't know whether he needs to speed up a little bit. I mean, we, 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 like, um, we like faster players, don't we? But you know, sort of moving into position constantly on the putts, I don't know whether that helps him. Um, but no, no, he's, he's still massively on our radar and, and will go well in all the majors, I think. Mm. What's that crest on your, your shirt? Well, that's Royal Dublin, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, Royal oh, Dublin. Yeah, nice. I went to Royal Dublin to, to play around with Rory McIlroy. I don't like to talk about it. When um, you got dressed this morning, did you think to yourself, how can I get dressed in such a way that there's not going to be a kit clash like last week? We both <laughs> turned up implausibly with a burgundy hoodie, didn't we? <laughs> you did. Well, I was very confident you wouldn't have one of these sort of neck protectors on because the, uh, yeah, the wife has um, bought me this new thermal thing to keep me warm in the shed. Um, so this is a really tight, thermal garment that goes all the way up my neck there because I get a lot of neck pain so they, uh, hopefully this is the answer so uh, yeah all credit to the wife for, for looking after <laughs> me there 
So it goes right up to the top. And, uh, yeah. yeah. You and, a and, Valentine's Day present. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. It did have some, some bonuses for Valentine's Day because obviously I have a big queue out the door on Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah, I, yesterday I just I sort of welcomed them in one by one and let them put a put a hickey on my neck. So yeah, I've got a neck full of hickeys and then sent them on their way. And uh, ah. they're all great. Yeah, so uh, yeah. No, I know it looks over. it looks a bit silly, doesn't it? But it is serving a real good practical purpose. Okay, excellent. Um, what? Let's talk about the shenanigans at, at Phoenix. Um, with I mean, obviously, Sam Ryder's ace at sixteen was brilliant, wasn't it? If you see the yeah. video, but there was a lot of debris thrown, wasn't it? I think it took eleven minutes to clear the course. Where do you stand on that? It's just a sort of one off. What the hell? Go with it. Great fun. Don't be so miserable trying to bring it down. I read a piece in the, the, the reason I reference it. I read a piece in the Times this morning where they they were saying that. Um, it's quite a good line, actually. So golf's the only show, the, the only sport where you can drink and drive. Um, but it, it, they were just saying it, it bordered on um, it bordered on just crossing that line, really. I mean, because didn't Ortiz also have a, an ace? And I think he got hit flush on the head with a beer can or something. So, I don't know. What did you make of it all? I think because it is a one off, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, the Phoenix Open is the party tournament and it's wild and it's completely different to any. Yeah, if that was happening every week, we'd have a problem, wouldn't we? But um, yeah, I think, yeah, Patrick Cartley's ball um, took a big hop, didn't it, at one point? That, and, and there was a lot of speculation whether that was a can that dented the green. And um, um, so obviously um, that sort of thing shouldn't be happening. But yeah, the, 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 they, they swoop in with the uh, the, the bin liners, don't they? And yeah, I thought, it was great. I thought it was great. Um, yeah, the tops off. I, I knew there's, yeah, there's a lot oh, yeah, of people Harry found Harry took his top off, didn't he? Yeah, and Joel Damon, I believe, took his top off. I mean, the, the tops off, a lot of people find, um, you know, naked flesh offensive at the best of times. You know, but, you know on, on, the, on the golf course, it, you know, it sh- you shouldn't see, you know, breasts, should you? <laughs> you shouldn't see male breasts. You shouldn't see any breasts. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, perhaps the tops off needs to stop. OK. Uh, but the rest of it, I'm all right with. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, th- I think that's fair enough. Although the, the writer in the Times article did say that it is sort of permeating out into other sports, and they said that the ah. Ryder Cup wasn't good as well. But anyway, never mind that. We don't want to be killjoys. It was a good week. Well done with your twenty-five to one winner with Scott Scheffler. That must have been a, a blessed relief for you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I was thinking, how how wonderful would it have been to have back there to be a hole in one at the sixteenth and be at that sixteenth? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm all for try, trying to find the you know, the ultimate buzzes in life. You know, I love getting that moment of exhilaration. If, if you'd had a big old bet on um, hole in one at the sixteenth and you spent the whole day there waiting for the moment, no, no wonder they went bananas. I bet a lot of them, because yeah, they can all punt in America now, can't they? Mm. Uh, so yeah. good luck to them. I think a lot of them would have backed hole in one there and got because that's the first hole in one. Since 2015 at the 16th, yeah, is it? But it's like amazing, buses, not... isn't it? Because it's not that hard a hole, is it? I mean, it's no, a standard no, no. par three, isn't it? No, it's a short hole, but I suppose the atmosphere is really, really, really tense. Um, but yeah, it, 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 like like buses, you know, everyone would say, yeah, like buses, like buses, like buses. You wait, you know, you wait seven years for one to come along and then and two come at once. You know, uh, yeah, the Saturday one was the yeah wonderful moment, wasn't it? It was, uh, yeah, it really was. Uh, so yeah. W- should we go across to Raz Alcamo? Because there was an incident there and I didn't particularly, I, I heard about it and I've, I've read all about it. Pablo Larath about what a, what a cad. I mean, what sort of way is that to behave? Where he, Did you not see it where he was hectoring the marshal? He, he was looking for relief, didn't get it and then just completely stropped off. Oh really? No, I haven't seen that. I tried to I'm sort a of bit take... of golf I've watched that you. Yeah, had, yeah. I mean, obviously the Raz Alcamo was destroying me, so I tried to stay away from it. I mean, yeah, we, Ryan Fox obviously desperately didn't want him to win there. He was the only player we didn't. Well, you're saying with. obviously why? Well, we had four players for the Raz, Raz Alkaima Championship on the same course they used last week. We stuck with two of them, and one player didn't play. Johannes Veerman jetted home, so there was literally, literally. Only one player that we didn't stick with from our previous week on the yeah, on the same course. And it was Ryan Fox. So, but Steve, you could have t- if you'd fancied him, you would have tipped him. You've got yeah, to no, stop tormenting yourself. I was guys, very close so. to doing that, but he, he revealed I mean, he had he, frustrating. But you know, you have did to you hear his interview? Himself. He revealed no. he had back problems. He revealed his back was playing up when we were on him. Missed the cut by a shot. He said he couldn't move through the ball properly. So, yeah, that, that, oh, that, that adds to, to the fury. Yeah, I really didn't want Ryan Fox to win, but, yeah, he knew my fate very, very early there. Yeah, 10 birdies in the first round, and, and this was one Fox that wasn't going to get hunted down, <laughs> wasn't it? That's true. I mean, I was hoping at one stage George could see him might pull off a miracle. I mean, could see got within four on Sunday, and I was quite hopeful. But he played that back nine terribly all week and, and didn't even get a place in the end. He finished ninth. So, uh, yeah. Did Hogard put up any excuse for his pathetic uh, attempts to follow up? 
I didn't see his interview afterwards. He was just lacking that sparkle of the previous week. I wonder whether the master's got in his head. I mean, we maybe watched the sweet spot. We probably didn't help him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. A lot of master's talk, wasn't there? Yeah, you know, that master's debut was in his nostrils. Maybe maybe that um, put him off a bit. I don't know. But yeah, he just didn't have that sparkle. And um, yeah, I thought it was nice to see Hurley Long play well, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. your man Hurley Long. I noticed that. He got joint third, didn't he? That was good. Bogey free Sunday 64, yeah. So Hurley Long, yeah, I think he'll win at some stage on the DP World Tour. And um, yeah, Nikolai Hogard will be back soon. I'm sorry we messed up there, but um, yeah, we were we were close in that one. But yeah, yeah, we only had two in the other one. We got the results, so we've got to be we've got to be put. Yeah, you know, we've got to be positive. Excellent. Did you hurt your hand there when you were just stipulating? It felt like you whacked it against the desk or something. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I think I fractured a finger or two there. <laughs> Is it so, smarting? Uh... Or are you over it now? <laughs> it's smarting. No, don't worry. I'll get through this. We'll, we'll okay. press on. The show must go on. Well, let's um, see if you can put your finger on the winner this week. Let's look ahead to the Genesis Invitational. I suppose it would be best known as the Los Angeles Open. It's always played at. Uh, Beautiful Riviera in Los Angeles. And we've got a truly world-class field assembled this year. Let's have a look at the betting. John Rahm is favourite at round about 9-1. to one. Patrick Cantlay, 12-1. to one. Dustin Johnson, 16. Justin Thomas, 16. Colin Morikawa, 18. Rory, 22. Matsuyama, 25. Cam Smith, 25. Chauvelet, 25. Hovland, 28, etc., etc. So I know that's really, really top class field this Steve isn't it uh looking forward to this one yes yeah, the best Genesis invitation we've ever had the top 11 players in the world are in this goodness I mean, me it doesn't get much better than this and it's a it's an old layout this Steve but they've managed to kind of um bomb proof it in a, in a sense haven't they so it's not really one where the big hitters have generally shone but in recent years you have had some power plays yeah some yeah yeah here, haven't you you have. It's got a bit longer. Tom Fazio came in for a little little um, tinker with it, and it has got a bit longer. But, yeah, it's, it's a strong ball-striking test. Uh, we're in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, California. 7,332 yards. Par 71, only three par fives. Tough assignment, tight track, lots of dog legs, extremely penal rough. Uh, known as a fader's paradise. Yeah, it suits the left-to-right shot shape for right-handers. Uh, the winner typically ranks, ranks extremely high in the Greg stats, all right? Uh, churning out greens and regulation is the key to success. We must mention the prize money. Great time to be a professional golfer. You've got the Saudis lurking in the background, you know, waving their super wads. The PJ Tour have reacted to that uh, by increasing prize money. You've got $12 million in the pot this week. $12 uh, million, goodness me. $2.16 million to the winner. God. And um, t- t- Tiger Woods hosting. Tiger Woods hosting. We must... Oh, lovely. Yeah, Tiger Woods is over my right show. He's hosting this week. So we'll have interviews with Tiger Woods to add to the excitement. Oh, how nice. That'll be good. Really looking forward to that. OK, then. And it starts about kind of Thursday lunchtime, I suppose, doesn't it, really, if you want to get your bets on? Yeah. That was probably the weakest question I've ever asked, <laughs> wasn't it? I always start at that time. I don't know why I said that. Never mind that. Let's get on to the more interesting business of how many selections you've got. We got five selections. There's a strong stake in plan. Five selections. Only one tournament. We can invest uh, all our beans on this tournament. Righty ho. Who's the headline tip? Headline tip is Dustin Johnson, who not long ago was the dominant force in the sport. World number one. Major number two came at Augusta at the end of 2020. It was a five shot win. All the talk was of how how long DJ would uh, you know, be the king of golf. And then the form dropped away a little bit. He's world number six at the moment. I think he lost a little bit of interest, a little bit of motivation in that spell. But I think the Ryder Cup in September was a turning point for him. He, he loved being the senior member of that team with lots of American youngsters on the team. He was the senior man. There was a passive captain in the shape of Steve Stricker. It's a really important role for, for Dustin Johnson as the most experienced player on that team. And he couldn't have performed it any better. Found his A game just before the competition started. Went 5-0, and won all five of his matches. Only the fifth player in Ryder Cup history to do that. I think it was a real boost to his confidence and and his interest in golf the close season classic dj said he did nothing uh anything sorry anything but golf anything but golf he just completely let his hair down recharged the batteries and he didn't even have the century tournament of champions to come back to this year because he didn't qualify for that the hawaii event so he's full of rust when he did come back farms insurance open what a tough assignment for your first tournament of the year at tory pine south um and he did well. He, he hit the ball surprisingly well. He shocked himself. 25th place there. His only other event this year, Saudi International, finished eighth. Again, good ball striking, didn't pop particularly well. So he's fresh, he's hungry, and now he comes to a dreamy venue for him. Johnson's power fade off the tee, perfect shot shape for Riviera. And his form figures from his last eight starts there. Two, 
two, four, one, 16, oh. nine, 10, eight. Always on the Riviera leaderboard. His 2017 victory was by five ruddy shots. He's won three PGA Tour events in California. The DJ is going to rock you. Wow, brilliant. You make a very compelling case there for DJ. It ran about 16 to one, brilliant. Okay then, who is the big danger to DJ, do you think? Next best, another player who hits nothing but fades off the tee. It's Colin Morikawa. His natural shot shape is the fade. Loves Riviera. Morikawa was born in Los Angeles. He's playing in the city of his birth this week. He relishes competition in California generally. It was in the Golden State that he became a major champion in the 2020 US PGA, San Francisco. He's a two-time major champion now. He's stalking top spot in the world rankings. And this tournament is a big deal for Morikawa, and he's taken a fortnight off to prepare for it. Not been seen since finishing 18th in the Dubai Desert Classic. He's not made much of an impact this year, but he's driving the ball really well. Riviera is a perfect course for him. And, um, yeah, I think it'll pay not to have short memories this week. You know, it's easy to think Morikawa was not really far in all cylinders this year, but it was less than three months ago he's winning the DP World Tour Championship. Less than seven months ago he was winning our Open Championship. Yeah, Morikawa was here to stay. He could be world number one on Sunday. Goodness me. Righty ho, next up. Next up, keeping the faith, I can forgive what happened last week, to Victor Hovland. Now you've dangled 28 to 1. Chilly morning, chilly morning in round one. Pulled a driver, uh, his second hole into the water. Didn't settle early on with the driver. Uh, he made some slight alterations to the driver before the event. Fiddled with the tipping on the, on the face of his driver. Uh, I think he took time to get used to that. He was better in round two, made four birdies in round two, but he made a triple bogey eight at the 15th hole. That was the killer blow, missed the cut. I can see him bouncing back straight away. He likes playing in California, won the US Amateur Championship at Pebble Beach in 2018, dominated that competition. He was second at Torrey Pines in the Farmers last year. And more importantly, he was fifth in the Genesis Invitational on his debut last year. This call sets up beautifully for him. Natural fader of the ball with the driver. Victor Hovland's your, your, your number three. OK, are we going further down the betting lists for our last two? We go progressively further down. Yeah, we do. And uh, we're now at Sam Burns uh, around the 40 to one mark. I sound like a broken record this week. I know, but he's another one who can hit that power fade in his sleep. You know, that's his natural shot. I fancy Burns to bounce back from what's been a little wobble. He was setting the pace in the FedEx Cup. He won the Sanderson Farms. He was on the leaderboard seemingly every week. But he's missed his last two cuts. Farms Insurance, Phoenix Open. Little wake-up call for him. I don't think he'd be hitting the panic button. He only, he's only one shot shy of the, the cut mark in Phoenix. I think he'll have ironed out his game in the last few days and, and be ready to tackle a course, which really suits. Last year, I won't test your memory. I think this one, I think this one will be just beyond you. But he was five shots clear at the halfway stage of the Genesis last year. He was two shots clear after three rounds. But crucially, PJ Tour maiden, it was too much, finished third. Since then, he's won two PGA Tour events. I think he'll take his chance if it comes his way this time. Are you going to loosen the, the zip there? Is it a bit tight? <laughs> I'm going to loosen Doesn't, that, yeah. You look like Colonel Mustard or something there with that thing. I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> is that better? I think you're struggling with a, a lack of Oh, hang on. No, the heat is on. It's not that. It's not that. The heat is on. I always forget to turn that off. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, that's, that, was a, that was a cardinal the, sim. The, the, the shed is very hard to ventilate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an absolute uh, criminally small shed. Um, if I strike it lucky one day, I'll, I'll buy a bigger house and actually do it, do what you do, do, do it from the mansion. But uh, well, I don't yeah. know about the mansion. OK, right then. We've got one more selection to come. Who is it? We've got one more. Uh, another fader of the ball. <laughs> so I've got a complete team of faders. 66 to 1. He, he, I mean, he hits a gorgeous, slightly different fade today. He hits it very low. It's sort of a bullet fade off the tee. Uh, it's Joachim Neiman. Um, and uh, yeah, Riviera is a wonderful layout for him. And, he, and he, he, he knew it from his amateur days. He played in the 2017 US Amateur Championship at Riviera and he finished sixth in the stroke play element of that event. And then he was knocked out in the knockout stages, but a very unlucky loser. He, 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 Neiman was two under par for his round uh, and he lost to Braden Thornbury, who was absolutely in, inspired that day. So Neiman showed an early liking to this course. He went well for two rounds at Riviera in the Genesis last year, dropped away over the weekend. So yet to make a serious impact in the Genesis. I think it happens this week. Very encouraging start to the year. Sixth in the uh, the Farmers, eighth in the Saudi International. I think he's a, he's a really lively outsider. You know, don't forget, former world number one amateur, and um, he's only 23 years old. Okay. So, yeah, there, there's, there's more to come from from Wackham Neiman. All right, fair enough. Jolly good. Um, anyone else almost get onto the list, or anyone else you want to mention? Anyone you're particularly negative about? 
it's a really competitive heat this you know each way terms are out there eight places 10 places i believe with ball sports um yeah you you, you want to be taking all the places you can at the moment because um there, there, there's so many potential winners of this you know john Rahm, we, we must talk about massively respected well suited to the course great california record uh, but should anyone be a single figure price to, to win this it's such a strong field. I, I don't think so. And he only sparkled in short spells last week. I can resist him at the odds. I think the closest I was coming to it, if I was going to have a sixth selection, I, 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 I obviously not going to Hideki Matsuyama. Um, solid course record. Course suits him well. He, he's, he's putting really well, Hideki Matsuyama. Um, Brooks Kupke, you can make a case for him. And Francesco Molinari lives in Los Angeles. Riviera member. You know, potential runner at a, a massive price. Okay. Right. Let's reiterate the tips. So we've got five for the Genesis Invitational, and they are Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, Sam Burns, and Wacom Neiman. Jolly good. Right. Good luck with those, Steve. Let's hope you can follow up and go back to back. Should we get stuck into the questions? Oh, let's, let's, let's. Have you cheated this week and had a look on my Twitter feed, or are you seeing all these blind? I, I often have a look at your Twitter feed because. Um, yeah, you know, you're always uh, doing lots of interesting things on Twitter. No, right? but I do, if uh, you know I'm doing Twitter questions, do you sometimes have a little quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did this. Have yeah, you I done did, that this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did this uh, morning. I don't yeah, like yeah. that. I don't like that. I like you to come in cold on all these things. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. But never mind. We can't turn back time. Bob Dylan, that's not his real name, says, if Steve had the ability to be a top golfer, would he be a calm golfer and have the work rate, mental toughness and so on to succeed? I'll answer that. No. <laughs> No, go on, I'll, Steve. I'll answer that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, well, I don't you wouldn't about, have. You wouldn't be calm. You'd be all no, over the place. About, You'd be worse than um, Pat Perez. You'd be smashing a bag around. <laughs> Awful. Fighting with think, your caddy. Um, I think if I was an elite player who knew that if I finished 60th, I'd still be earning you know, more than the average wage of, of anyone. I, I, I think. I think I'd be relaxed with that amount of prize money for 60th. I think you'd have to work, right? You're a very industrious um, person. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, we're never going to know, are we? We're never going to know. No, my, probably not. My days are numbered. <clears throat> Bob also says, does Steve remember what VA stands for? If so, is he disappointed it didn't catch on? Of course he does. Steve still sends me texts with VA in them. Yeah, yeah. Very amused. Very amused. Yeah, because you don't like, you didn't like LOL, did you? You wanted an I, ant. You thought LOL was stupid. So you tried to come out with an alternative and you came out with VA, which I yeah, thought was good. People use lol when they, they're not laughing out loud, loud. you know, particularly the yeah. kids. They'll put lol for anything and they're not laughing out loud. And put the, the emojis wind me up as well. The, the, cry, the crying with laughter face. It's not mm. happening, is it? It's not happening. You're very amused. Put VA. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. We should, make, should we have another go at trying to get that off the ground? VA. Let's, let's yeah? do it. Let's campaign that. Yeah, yeah do some I'll, I'll see if I can get it. an influencer to, to put <laughs> VA on. <laughs> right Sebastian then. Carmichael Brown. Yeah, yeah. he'd, he'd, he'd yeah, be able to boy, get that off it. the ground. Right, Jack says, who is the next first time major winner in waiting? Um, yeah. Victor Hovland's going to win the USPJ Championship, win his first major. Okay. His prediction for the next European Ryder Cup team, you hate the Ryder Cup, don't you? You hate all that long-term Ryder Cup talk. But come on, give me a couple of players you think might fall so in. We've got 18 months to go, haven't we? Well, that's a good job that I did have a look at that because that would have been a very challenging question otherwise because I would have immediately have said, I've got no interest in the Ryder Cup. But for your man, I thought about it this morning. And uh, I think there's only going to be two newcomers. I think the Hogar brothers will get on the team. So I think the Hogar brothers will be on the next team and then you'll have 10 players that have played it before. Rahm, Hovland, McElroy, Hatton, Fitzpatrick, Casey, Peters, Fleetwood, Lowry, Garcia. Oh, you've named the team. Yeah, I've named the team. That's what the man wanted. Brilliant. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I mean, that's quite it's, a strong, it's a surprisingly strong team, actually. A lot of doom and gloom about the... Uh, it's yeah, we're in Hatton. Italy next, aren't we? We're, we're in Italy. Time. Yeah, that, that team's handy. Hmm. Oh, by the way, talking of Italians, I know this isn't one of the questions, but someone did point out on Twitter on Sunday, there was a three, because you remember last week, you were having a go at people with glasses. Um, and um, <laughs> there was a three ball, I think, on Sunday with Law up against Hao Tung Lee and Guido Midigliosi. I saw they were together, yeah, I saw they were together. Who won it? Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not oh, sure, but yeah, I, okay. yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, Guido and Hao Tong were, were nowhere near, were they? I mean, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not starting to wish on against the premises. Yeah, right, this is a good... OK, this is a good question. Sorry, Steve. Frankie Burton says, um, has Steve noticed any marked difference in players' putting stats now the Greens books are banned? Can't be helping the likes of Bryson. 
That's yeah, a good question. That, it's, isn't a good, it? it's, a, it's a really good question. I think, I'd say it's too early to say. Yeah, you know, we're only a couple of months into the into the year. I, I, it's the usual faces at the top. Yeah, yeah. Brian Gaze, your Cameron Smith is still at the top. But there, there is one name standing out actually. But Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel's going surprisingly well. Maybe the Green Books were holding back Billy Horschel, and you know he's, he's an instinct putter. Who knows? Just remind we'll me what a Green's book is. Is it just something with like really detailed sort of contour details and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vectors of the uh, of the Green. So uh, yeah, Bryson DeChambeau, your man mentions there. He absolutely loved it, and um, um, yeah, yeah. He's probably the one hurting the most. Alan Rodney. I mean, th- this is fascinating. I used to build pylons, Steve. I can build you a bespoke one for your back garden. I mean, how about imagine being a pylon builder? Wouldn't that be yeah. brilliant? <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough job, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even know how you do that. I mean, I, I it's assume... It's like Meccano, I suppose, isn't it? Bit, bit by bit, you just yeah, screw them bit. together. And perhaps you start at the bottom. Well, you obviously start at the bottom. You don't want to float one in the, in the air. But perhaps you, you start at the bottom and sort of climb on the bit you've done. And then... Yeah. The slot. Yeah, but when right. you put the actual electricity in, that must be a really tough job. A lot of pressure there, isn't there? A lot of... I hope he got a lot of danger money because, yeah, one mm. false move and he's, he's frazzled, isn't he? Yeah, I bet they, they probably dangle the wires off when they've, when they've finished, I'd imagine. Shane Cunningham says, if Steve could play in a four ball, who would the other three be? And who out of those three would he reckon would have the most crack having a few tinctures? That's a good question. So the same question to me. I'll have a go after you, Steve. Yeah, I've had that question, I think, on a watch along. Uh, Tiger Woods. Anna Kornikova and Natalie and Brugalio is my uh, is always my answer, and that will oh, be so the answer. Did for... you watch the Masked Singer on Saturday? I did watch the Masked Singer on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, won yeah. It, didn't she? it was great to see Natalie again, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Um... I must admit, I've, I haven't watched the Masked Singer this year. It's just, it's just too. I can't have it. It's just ridiculous. Really? Yeah, I know. My daughter loves it. So, yeah, yeah. Big Mars Singer fans. Yeah, I great. knew it was Michael, Michael Owen, didn't you? So, Michael. We got that from a very early stage. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I love it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Natalie, Natalie would probably be the, the most crack. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Do you and Grace chant, take it off? Take <laughs> it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And my son does that as well. My two year old son. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit oh, aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit aggressive, that take it off business. But, um, and a yeah. corny cover, blimey, that's a blast in the past. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I assumed it would be golfers. So I'm going to go golfers only. So I'm going to go with, um, you've got to go Tiger, haven't you? You have to have Tiger in there. Um, I think Peter Malnati looks quite a good laugh, doesn't he? <laughs> he's, a, he's a smiler, isn't he? Yeah, he's a nice yeah. lad. Yeah, he certainly wouldn't yeah. um, call you up on any rules in fractions. Or anything. And then you'd have to go with Lefty. I mean, look, Lefty, you'd talk punting and everything. I mean, he just looks an absolute ledge, doesn't he? Yeah, awesome. so, yeah, 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 yeah. Blotted his copybook a bit recently, though, anyway, with his... Uh... His comments about the PGA Tour, you know, you're not be following that one. No, not really. No, I, a lot of what golfers said passed me by, but yeah, that, I think they'd be my ones. Okay, right then. Um, let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Where have we got next? Oh, I don't know. Sorry, hang on a sec. That's not a <laughs> That's question. What, Alan Partridge oh, yeah, would call I'm, that dead air, wouldn't he? No, Partridge no, no, would have been no, no, fuming. No, no. I want. I want to ask about this. Rob says, what do we think of the Gala? I'm glad he raised that because I was going to do oh, so yeah, early. Yeah, 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 he's been yeah, an yeah, early yeah, yeah. He's really interesting, this guy, the Gala, isn't he? Yeah, Tell us all yeah, about yeah, him yeah, and what yeah, you think yeah, he can yeah. achieve. It was heartbreaking to see him crying on the on Sunday. I mean, he was crying like a baby after, oh, after losing. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He broke, broke down afterwards. I mean, yeah, obviously he's been, he was in contention for a long old way. I'm really unlucky with that uh, tee shot on 17. Um, I think he's got a good range of shots. You know, he's, he's not your typical youngster. He's not a robot. He's, um, he's got a v- good wide variety of shots, great short game, um, and plenty of bottle to hang around in that environment for so long. Um, but I just think his driving's a bit loose. He's a bit wild with the driver, a bit, bit, bit raw, a bit inexperienced. Keep him on your radar, but I think it's too early to, to be backing him. OK. Darren Lewis says, does Steve treat himself after a particularly big win? So he can look at something and think, Tiger Woods played for that TV or Thomas Bjorn got me that watch. I know you and I have a massive uh, aversion to wrist watches, don't we? We don't. We think they're the most pointless things on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you need to turn the time, you just look at your phone, don't you? I don't know anyone mm. who genuinely looks at their watch. Uh, so I know I haven't got a watch. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't need anything. I don't treat myself to anything nowadays. Yeah, as long as the fridge has got some beer in, I'm happy. I don't need anything else than a, and a, and a, and some beer in the fridge. Um, but I treat my family. I treat my family. I, my, my daughter knows that every time I go for a win, she's going to get something. And um, she was really excited when I told her on Monday morning that the chef had won. So, um, yeah, she got a, she, she, she's actually going to get a really good birthday present this year. Um, oh, great. She doesn't watch the sweet spot, so I can announce it's going to be a surprise, but she's going to go and see The Blossoms, which is her favourite band. Have you heard of The Blossoms? I think, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, not only have I heard of them, I know them well enough to know that they're just called Blossoms. 
Oh, really? They're not the I'm blossoms? I'm pretty sure oh. they're not the <laughs> blossoms, yeah. They're just blossoms. Oh, I better oh, yeah. brush up on my uh, blossoms at them because, uh, yeah, yeah, the blossoms are supporting the killers or killers um, at uh, St. Mary Stadium, Sutton FC uh, oh, in lovely. May. So, um, obviously, yeah. Oh, absolutely... you've got tickets for that, have you? I have pr- I have secured tickets for for that yeah it's um uh, you know b- bank busting prices so yeah but so so thank well, that's you that's what so, it's all about isn't it when you that's when what you it's all do about. something nice yeah yeah absolutely she's going to be so happy she's in love with these uh, these blossoms you know Tom Ogden you know she she she, she, she <laughs> Tom, I think that's his name isn't it? Tom Ogden I don't, I don't know you've done me that you've exhausted my <laughs> blossoms knowledge but. I think he's the front man she's in love with the blossoms I mean they they all need a good haircut if you ask me but um yeah she 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 worships these guys and she's going to get to see him so. Oh, fantastic! I hope you haven't got standing tickets. You're in the, you're in the, you're sitting down, presumably, aren't you? Sitting down, yes. Yeah. Sitting down. Oh, that would yeah. be lovely, wouldn't it? Good for you, mate. Uh, uh, let me think. A couple more. Barry McPhee says, um, when Steve gives his notables in the Racing Post columns, others to note, does he back any of them because he's had a few winners there? You do have it. That's the sort of sods law column, really, isn't it? That yeah, the, the yeah, four yeah. or five players that almost made it. But you, the one thing about you, you're very principled with your tips, aren't you? You, you would rather lose money than than win backing one of the other notables if yeah. you haven't actually tipped them that's your kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. approach to all this isn't it Abso- absolutely we're all in this together we win together we lose together i certainly had never backed in others to know and i feel great pain when when they win i mean ryan fox was in there last week and you know one at 60 to one so, you know if i wouldn't put other people off backing them because they've got a remarkable record of success you know it's infuriating yeah these things were sent to try us weren't they steve eh? yeah they, they, they send a lot our way don't they yeah. Right then. Del Todd, what does Steve think of the current crop of commentators and TV coverage? Does he like CBS, Sky or NBC best? Favourite modern day commentators? Does he pine for Alice Hay, Critchley and Harry Carpenter? Or maybe it doesn't matter to him. Blimey, there's a lot there. What do you think? Who's your favourite? Who do you like and who do you pine for? I think the last comment's the most ap- applicable one. It, it doesn't really matter to me. I have, the, I have the sort of commentary in my head. Don't really listen intently to what they're saying unless... I need some on course commentary. Yeah, they're, they're, they're your Wayne Rileys and your Rich Beams. They're the ones I, I need most. Um, yeah, there was a, w- w- Sheffield's ball was very close to going in a divot, wasn't it? During that, uh, I think it was during the playoff. And yeah. I was des- desperate to hear Rich Beams, you know, the, the verdict on that. Um, so, um, yeah, I'd say uh, Wayne Riley and Rich Beam are my favourite chair, yeah, but uh, it, it's, it's not that important. You know, people get too, I mean, you, you get really angry, don't you, at uh, poor performances on the on the commentary. But, um, I do. It, it's I, um, far too angry. It just doesn't Yeah, just, just just turn them down. You can watch golf with no, no. I often watch golf with no sound at all. Uh, yeah, yeah you, if get, I'm getting you get a, the caption, don't you? Actually, that's a pretty good shout, that. It's pretty, yeah. I just think there's too big a difference between the good ones and the bad ones. I mean, Butch is obviously just different class, isn't he? I like most of Doherty. Wayne Riley's just fantastic. I mean, that stuff he does on the on on the fairways is superb. Yeah. But you get some of them. I mean, some of them just sound like they're going through the motions. Um, Jamie Spence very good in Europe. Jamie Spence is very good. Yeah, yeah. Friend of friend of the Racing Post, isn't he? But yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just some of them. You just think you're not really trying there. But um, yeah, there, there you go. That, that's that. I think that'll do us for the questions, Steve. Sorry if we didn't get round. I, 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 I got all day. I I got all day. I can fire some more. I got all day. Well, you might do, mate, but I'm a very busy man, so <laughs> we're going to have to wrap. But thank you. Oh, no, All hang right. on a sec, Steve. Can you just oh, yeah. pad for a second? Because there is one guy who's been texting me the same, who's been tweeting me the same question to ask you for so long, and I must get around to doing it. Can you okay, tell us your favourite okay. joke while I am doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did the golfer carry two pairs of trousers? Why? In case he got a hole in one. Oh, that's good. That is very, yeah, very that, good. That, that's, yeah. my, that's my favourite joke. That. Do you want to know my favourite joke at the moment? I really do, yeah. Played a uh, played a game of football in a quarry yesterday. We won 4-3 on aggregate. <laughs> oh, here it is. Right, this is from yeah. Dave Wormsley. Dave Wormsley. Right, Dave, here we go. We're going to get round to your question. Where the Dickens? Another wisecrack from one of our commentors. You know, I read oh, all okay. the comments. There's some lovely comments out of it this week. I really appreciate it. There was a good wisecrack in there from a fellow. It was a gout joke, wasn't there? He said, I went to the oh, doctors. Yeah. I went in the doctors and he, and he said, gout. And um, he said, oh, I'm, I'm like, come on, man. I've only just got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's abuse, isn't it? I can't find his question. I'm doing this <laughs> week, Dave. Sorry, mate. Sorry. What have we got next week, Steve? I think we've only got one again, haven't we? Oh, come on. Uh, what's happening? We're, we need the Saudis to, to get going so we can actually have some <laughs> golf tournaments. Honda Classic. Honda Classic. 
Comedy uh, Classic. Yeah, yeah, DP World Tour's back with the um, the Kenya Open the week after next. But yeah, we it's the start of the Florida Swing next week. We have got to get excited. The Florida Swing's always fantastic, um, and and the Honda Classic kicks us off there. Yeah. Oh, I backed the winner. This is incredible. I backed the winner of the Kenya Women's Open last week. Goodness gracious me! What was her name? Esther Henselite. Esther Henselite. Have you heard of Esther Henselite? No, I've not heard oh. of Esther Henselite. Yeah, she's German, and um, I was just looking through, and I noticed that she she um, I thought, well, I'll have a little read up and see if there's an edge on this. And she won it last year, and she was ten to one at about the halfway stage. So I thought, well, I might have a little bit on Esther Henselite. Yeah, it's very it? difficult. Yeah, so she's she my star. Of the week. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She's Esther Henselite. Now that's it. What price you get on that? Uh, tens. Tens. That's a bonus. Yeah. Really so my, my my latest favourite golfer is Esther Henselite. I know Esther Ranson. She's the only Esther I know. Is she still with us? Probably not. Yeah, no, she is. Yeah, oh, she is. She oh, is. oh, she's a trooper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. E- e- the name Esther's still being used actually because my 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 daughter made a friend at the swimming pool the other day called Esther. Yeah, there's yeah, a six, I, there's I quite a six, like that. Uh, name. Still going strong, isn't it? I thought that was sort of an old person's name. But no, no, it's a it's, decent. Uh, it's, 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 it's a it's good very one. much I, not. Yeah, I'm mm, a big mm. fan of an Esther. Right, yeah. excellent. So that was that was a, an upbeat note to end it on. Steve, what have you got between now and next week? Yeah, I normally bring us down at this point. No, I see if I can find a downbeat yeah, note. Bring us down. Living, Russians um, invading Ukraine. What else have you got for us? <laughs> Well, I have a storm for you. A storm, storm Eunice is coming our way. Have you seen the storm warnings? No. Yeah, we've got some. Yeah, well, this is this is a good public service announcement then, because if any sweet spot listeners out there based in the UK, we've got quite a serious storm coming our way. We've got 80 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour gusts. Storm Eunice is coming in to d- destroy. Yeah, there's a um, there's a danger of life warning out there. Um, so watch out. But I mean, for me personally, if I can just bring us back up again, I love a good storm. Mm. Um, I really relish getting out there when 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 you've got the 80 mile hour winds. I know there is an element of danger, but I find it exhilarating. You know, particularly yeah. if you take take a lot a few layers off. Yeah, this is a little oh. tip. Yeah, I've given you the golf tips. A little tip for for people who are struggling. Yeah, a lot of people are miserable at the moment. A lot of people are really really miserable. Yeah, it's that time of year and it bleak midwinter, cost of living crisis, etc. 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 If you can find a sort of a bit of yeah, you know, quiet little private place in the world, strip completely naked in a storm. Really? Yeah. Are you, are you, you have actually done that? Yeah, I have done that. Yeah. Don't worry, I haven't committed any lewd offences. You obviously have to make sure there's no one around. Yeah. Did sometimes you go to the pylon and strip off. It <laughs> I haven't done that. Element. Is... <laughs> cool. I imagine how that could go horribly wrong. But there's an element, there's an element of danger. I don't want to. I don't want to get anyone in any trouble. Um. Yeah. What? Make sure you're on your own. But um. Yeah. It, it's just a real buzz. Like, yeah. You, you, you don't even have to strip, strip completely naked. Just lay her down. As the wind's whipping across you and you just run around. It's so exhilarating. OK, I can just see the, the report now in the Oldham Gazette. A man pleaded not guilty to um, what, what, would, what would the crime be? That's uh, lewd conduct, isn't it? Lewd yeah, conduct. lewd conduct. He claimed that he'd listened to a golf podcast in which one of the presenters advocated stripping naked in a storm. Yeah. Good for mental health. Good for mental health, which we all need at the moment. Yeah, you can That's slap true, your wings. You might be able to take off if you, if you t- time your time your run right. You get an 80 mile an hour gust and flap. You can levitate for a little bit. This is getting too silly. Good luck with your tips, Steve, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you very much indeed for listening to the Sweet Spot. Mm-hmm.